The Jehovah's Witness community has been embroiled in controversy surrounding allegations of child sexual abuse for years, and recently the New Zealand Court of Appeal delivered a significant blow to the organization by rejecting its appeal to be excluded from the National Commission investigating these disturbing allegations. And this decision has far-reaching consequences not only for the Jehovah's Witnesses, but also for the broader discourse on accountability and justice in cases of institutional abuse. Jehovah's Witnesses have faced mounting scrutiny over their handling of child sexual abuse cases. Like many religious organizations, they have been accused of prioritizing internal protocols over reporting allegations to secular authorities. Such practices have allowed perpetrators to escape accountability and continue their abuse with impunity. In New Zealand, the issue gained prominence with the establishment of the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Historical Abuse in State Care and in care of faith-based institutions. Now, this commission, much like the Australian Royal Commission, aims to investigate allegations of abuse within various institutions, including religious organizations like the Jehovah's Witnesses. And the organization initially sought to distance itself from the inquiry, claiming it fell outside its jurisdiction. The organization attempt, uh, to, attempted to evade scrutiny faced a setback when their appeal to be excluded from the inquiry was rejected by the New Zealand Court of Appeal. A legal but by the Jehovah's Witnesses Church, challenging a ruling by the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Abuse and Care, has been dismissed by the Court of Appeal. At the Wellington Court in March, the Church appealed a High Court ruling that dismissed its claim to be excluded from the investigation. And Watchtower's lawyer disputed the decision to broaden the scope of the inquiry from institutional care to trust-based relationships. She said the amendment was unlawful because it went beyond the original purpose of the inquiry. Now, the Jehovah's Witness Church maintains it should be exempt because it did not run institutions that cared for children or vulnerable people. And the decision upheld uh, the Commission's authority to investigate allegations of abuse within the Jehovah's Witness community, signaling a significant legal defeat for the organization. Now, the court's ruling emphasized the importance of accountability and transparency, particularly in cases involving vulnerable individuals such as survivors of child sexual abuse. It reaffirmed the Commission's mandate to examine systemic failures within institutions regardless of their religious affiliation. Now, despite mounting pressure and legal proceedings, the organization has often been hesitant to fully engage with external inquiries. And at the heart of the Jehovah's Witnesses' reluctance lies their theological convictions and interpretation of Scripture. And central to their beliefs is the notion of separation from the secular world, which they perceive as morally corrupt and under the influence of Satan. And this worldview shapes their attitudes towards interactions with governmental authorities whom they often view with suspicion and distrust and the Jehovah's Witnesses adherence to a strict interpretation of biblical principles including concepts of loyalty to God's kingdom and obedience to spiritual authority further complicates their relationship with in external institutions. They prioritize the authority of their religious leadership, the governing body, over secular authorities, sometimes leading to conflicts of interest when faced with legal obligations. And the Jehovah's Witnesses organizational structure includes an internal judicial system designed to address allegations of wrongdoing among members. And this system operates independently of secular courts and is guided by internal policies and procedures outlined in their literature, such as the Shepherd, the Flock of God book. And this internal system often prioritizes reputation of organization of the organization over the well-being of abuse survivors. Cases of abuse are typically handled internally with allegations adjudicated by appointed elders rather than being reported to external authorities. And this practice known as the two-witness two rule requires corroboration from a second witness or confession from the accused, making it difficult for survivors to seek justice within the organization. Now, from a legal standpoint, the Jehovah's Witnesses may adopt 
a strategy of minimizing legal exposure and liability by avoiding external scrutiny. Engaging with government-led uh, institutions could potentially open the organization to litigation, damages, and reputational harm, jeopardizing its financial stability and credibility. And by maintaining a stance of non-cooperation or limited disclosure, the Jehovah's Witnesses seek to protect their interests and shield themselves from legal repercussions. Now, this approach may be driven by a desire to preserve the autonomy and sovereignty of the organization, even at the expense of transparency and accountability. The repercussions of the court's decision are multifaceted and could have a profound implication for Jehovah's Witnesses, both in New Zealand and beyond. And some of those implications are, number one, a legal precedent. The court's ruling has sets a precedent for future cases involving allegations of child sexual abuse within religious organizations. It underscores the obligation of these institutions to cooperate with external investigations and uphold the rights of survivors to seek justice. And number two, public scrutiny. The Jehovah's Witnesses' involvement in, in the Commission's inquiry will likely lead to increased public scrutiny and their internal policies and practices regarding child protection. This scrutiny could fuel further inquiries and legal actions in other jurisdictions where similar concerns have been raised. And number three, uh, reputation damage. The negative publicity surrounding the court's decision could tarnish the organization's reputation as a religious organization. And the public perception of how they handle allegations of abuse may impact recruitment efforts, and fundraising initiatives potentially leading to a loss of support and influence. Number four, financial ramifications. Legal battles and settlements related to child sexual abuse allegations can impose significant financial strain on organizations like the Jehovah's Witnesses. The cost of defending lawsuits and compensating uh, survivors impact their financial resources and necessitate changes in budget allocation and fundraising strategies. And we all know who ultimately covers the cost for these, the rank and file members and their donations. And of course, then there's the internal reform. The heightened scrutiny resulting from the court's decision may compel the Jehovah's Witnesses to reassess their internal policies and procedures regarding child protection. They may be prompted to implement further reforms aimed at preventing uh, future abuse and improving their response uh, to allegations. We can only hope that more reforms and policy changes do happen to protect the children. The Australian Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse was a landmark inquiry that brought to light widespread allegations of abuse across various institutions, including religious organizations. And among those scrutinized was the Jehovah's Witnesses community, which faced significant attention and criticism for its handling of child abuse cases. And over the course of several years, the commission conducted hearings, received testimonies, and gathered evidence from survivors uh, and experts and representatives of, of various institutions, including religious bodies like the Jehovah's Witnesses. And key issues highlighted during the Royal Commission's investigation included the two-witness rule, their shunning policy, and their lack of cooperation. In its final report released in 2017, the Royal Commission made several findings and recommendations relevant to the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, community. Some of the key uh, findings and conclusions included uh, their failure to protect children, their need for reforms, and their legal obligations. The New Zealand Court of Appeals rejection of the Jehovah's Witness appeal to be excluded from the National Commission uh, investigating child sexual abuse represents a significant setback for the organization in New Zealand. It underscores the imperative uh, of accountability and transparency in cases of institutional abuse and sets a legal precedent for future inquiries into similar allegations. The consequences of this decision extend beyond legal ramifications, impacting the Jehovah's Witnesses' reputation, their finances, and internal practices. And ultimately, the ruling highlights the importance of prioritizing the rights and well-being of survivors in the pursuit of justice.